So uh, there's a collection of properties that we should be aware of, of this uh, thing that we've defined, the matrix exponential. So I'm going to show you here in the notes uh, just this list of properties. A lot of these take uh, some time and effort to, to prove, um, but they're worth paying attention to because not everything just that works normally for the notation e to a number works automatically. So here's the first one. We already saw this one. Uh, e to the 0 is the identity. That one's easy. That we just got by plugging in 0 for a, and identity is the only term, the only non-zero term in this infinite series. Um, other ones, so you might hope that e to the So you might hope that e to a matrix times e to another matrix, assuming they're both n by n matrices, would be e to the sum of the matrices, right? Um, but unfortunately, it does not always work that way. Uh, it's, it's a lot more complicated. Um, however, if it's the same matrix and you just have like a t here and an s here, like different scalars, then it does work to do this. Um, and there's a nice interpretation for this. If you interpret e to the s a as the matrix that, when you apply it to an initial condition, flows it along by amount of time s in the phase space, and, and this flows uh, points along by an amount of time t, then when you apply this and then this, then together this should flow you along by uh, amount of time s and then further along by amount of time t. So it flows you along by time t plus s. Um, do you see what I mean by flow along? Like when you apply this to a vector x naught of initial conditions, that would be um, the solution to, to your differential equation system evaluated at time s. And then apply this to that new initial condition. OK, uh, anyway, not too important, but there is a nice interpretation for what, what this is actually saying. Um, e to the minus a, so if you put in the negative of a matrix here, then you do actually get the inverse matrix. So what we're saying is um, even though you don't in general get this, you still do get this. It just wouldn't, yeah, you still do get this. Um, and this thing that I was worried about here does work if uh, a, B equals B, A. So this does work if A, B equals B, A. Um, and finally, and this is, uh, um, this is the one that we're actually going to take uh, the most advantage of pretty soon. So this is one of the most important ones to be aware of, uh, is that if you take an invertible matrix and then you conjugate, this is called conjugation, you conjugate uh, the matrix before exponentiating it, then that's the same as conjugating after exponentiating. So if you conjugate, so P, A, P inverse, and then exponentiate that, that's the same as first exponentiate, get a new exponentiated matrix, and then conjugate that. So a lot of the difficulty with trying to think about things like E to the A plus B um, versus e to the a, e to the b, uh, is having to do with the, the fact that matrix multiplication will not always commute. So a, b is not always b, a. So when you go back and look at the definition of the matrix exponential, um, if you plug in um, like a, a, a sum of matrices here, uh, then when you expand out to that sum, uh, when you when you plug in a sum of matrices here in the power series, you will get powers of sums, right? And that will expand out in some big massive way. But for example, like the square of uh, a sum a plus b is going to have cross terms. It'll be like a squared plus ab plus ba plus b squared. But the cross terms are not going to match up. A, b, and ba will not match up. And this one will have even more cross terms, and then those cross terms might not match up. And when they don't match up, you have trouble with getting this kind of thing to work. So when you're uh, thinking about this one, uh, you, you might have a similar concern. E to this product uh, is going to be uh, 
well, just think about this product, P A P inverse, being uh, substituted for A in the definition of E to the A. So P A P inverse here, and then P A P inverse here, but then squared, and that cubed, and so on. Um, you might worry that that explodes in complexity, but if you think about um, so this is worth looking at briefly P A P inverse that'll be I plus P A P inverse plus one half P A P inverse squared plus one over three factorial P A P inverse cubed and so on right so like let's focus on this squared here. This will be PAP inverse multiplied by itself, right? This one will be PAP inverse, PAP inverse, PAP inverse, written three times. You might think that as you look at further and further terms, they're going to increase in complexity, and there's no way you'll get something as simple as this. And of course you wouldn't normally, but because of the particular structure of, of conjugation, P A P inverse like this, you get these next to each other, P inverse P. Uh, and when you write three of them, then you all the inner parts are sort of canceling. So P inverse P, that'll be identity, right? So this will be P identity A, P A identity A, P inverse. So we get P A squared, P inverse. So conjugation has this wonderful feature that if you take A, and then conjugate it, and then square that, that's the same as taking A, squaring it, and then conjugating that. Uh, and the same goes for cubing, and taking any power, nth power. So you can use that feature of conjugation, that it commutes with taking powers of matrices, to prove this. So this is really, really awesome. We will use this to help us in computing the exponential of a matrix.